Hey everyone, it's Byron. I'm getting to testify for Jesus Christ. Last night on, well, it was actually early this morning, July the 10th, 2019, I had a dream. In the dream, I saw military vehicles being transported on trains and military equipment, some of which I could not even recognize. Uh, it had some type of containerization caption around the top of it. I didn't recognize what it was. But I did see ground escorts running beside the uh, train, Humvees. Now, that's um, the first part of the dream. Second part of the dream, and I don't know how the transition occurred. It was almost like just poof. Suddenly, I was in a man's house. And I was cleaning his house so much so that I was turning the furniture upside down and vacuuming between cracks underneath the furniture. And I was specifically trying to suck anything out that was unclean. And then I woke up. I, well, I think my wife was with me, but then I woke up. A couple things. One is, um, I've had many dreams about military uh, transport, being, I mean, trains being used to transport military. Uh, I've seen, I think, two times Russian equipment on trains inside the United States. I've seen U.S. equipment on United in dreams that dream last night. I don't know whose equipment that was. It appeared to be U.S. Um, but I've seen U.S. equipment in real life being transported. And that's a normal thing when you got to get, you know, say from someone from Fort Campbell is uh, deploying to uh, Afghanistan, and then they have to transport their equipment um, to a port to get it on a ship. That would be a normal thing. But <clears throat> When you begin to have people talking about dreams and revelations from the Lord about military movement on trains, and you see it in real life, it really has a shock effect. Um, also, on on the, the train side, I saw once where a group of men took over a train, and they were going from city to city as demolition teams. They would stop the train in the city blow something important up, get back on the train, drive to the end of the line. They had me. I was like the conductor. They had me until the last stop. And then when they were finished blowing up whatever they had to blow up, finished with the train, they prepared to kill me. So these kind of things um, are coming to the United States. And I just want to say this. I've been in Panama, Operation Just Cause, when I'm sure that the Panamanian people and Noriega, etc., were pretty much going about life as usual. We, the United States, had people inside the country prepared for any moment to strike. I had a friend of mine who was literally in Panama uh, three months before Operation Just Cause kicked off. When Operation Just Cause kicked off, I was at Fort Bragg. They looked, we know we jumped into <coughs> airplanes I uh, flew down there and jumped into Old Mar Chirios International Airport and <laughs> narrowly missed catching Noriega at the airport. Later, we, we caught him. Uh, well, they actually turned himself in. But I'm telling you, the attack hit Panama so quickly, so swiftly, that their, def their forces that you know had any intention of defending were just overwhelmed by us being there so quickly. I see in my dreams the same things happening here in the United States. And if you read about Mystery Babylon, um, things coming about to Mystery Babylon, which the Lord has shown me is the United States, you'll see the same things. I'm going to read some scripture from Isaiah. Yesterday, I think I, I did a video and I included Isaiah 47 in the video or the day before. I can't remember which day it was. But here's another one. Um, Isaiah 47 is dealing with Mystery of Babylon. I'm going to start at verse 10. And this is talking about Mystery of Babylon, or the word coming from the Lord. It says, uh, Thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast set in thine heart, as I have said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, Thou shalt not know from whence it rises. The mischief shall fall upon thee. 
Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be that thou shalt be able to profit, for so, if so, thou shalt mayest thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let none of the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee, for these things shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not uh, be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. That's just talking about destruction coming to Mystery Babylon. And uh, as I said, the Lord showed me that is the United States. And some people say, well, it's a city. And okay, if it is a city, let's call it New York. But within Babylon, there are cities. And you can go and find that within Scripture. Um, the United States is not doing well. The second part of that dream was a house cleaning. In this scripture, it talks about the sorceries uh, that you labored in from the youth, and you had you had prognosticators and uh, astrologers, stargazers, etc., etc. Uh, on the Christian side of the house, I've mentioned that it's their judgment begins in the house of the Lord, and, and it's going to hit um, the Christian side of the house first, then. Mystery Babylon will be destroyed later. And I, I covered that, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, um, in one of the two videos. But there's a house cleaning that we need to do in our homes. And I'm, I'm not necessarily speaking of the physical aspect, although you may have some things around that you need to get out of your house from the physical. Um, and basically, anything worldly, or that's friendship with the world, or anything that would be considered an um, idol, or anything like that, whether or not you regard it as one or not, it might be a good idea to get rid of it. That's in the physical. But in the spiritual side, we need to do house cleaning as well. And in the day and age that we live, in the country that we grew up in, with the pastors that we have, um, they have literally taught us how to say we're Christian and be friends with the world. There are things within our own life that we need to do house cleaning on. And one time the Lord showed me a man with a water hose cleaning a restroom. And he showed me a mist going onto some curtains. Hopefully you can see this in the up here. I believe you can. And I was washing the curtains as a mist hit them with my hands. And I knew that particular house, not this one, but that particular one, was going to be sanctified, set aside, a place for the future. <clears throat> In Scripture, it talks about um, Jesus prepares his bride with the washing of water by the word. The washing of water in the Old Testament we use to cleanse things. When you look and see how um, Hezekiah went in and started cleaning stuff, anything that was unclean, they chunked into the brook, brook Kidron. Uh, but they also cleaned uh a house cleaning. We are now the temple. They, in, in Hezekiah's time, they cleaned the temple and the uncleanness in that. But now we are, and we need to clean. And the best way I know how, even if you don't, if you don't necessarily know where to start, it's by the word of God, the washing of water by the word. And <clears throat> there's always a tendency of man to try to do things on his own. But Jesus Christ left in order that he could send the helper. And he has sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, and he he is for he is there for us to use uh, in the house cleaning. So that's what I saw last night: military convoys, uh, military equipment on trains with ground escorts of Humvees. Uh, saw him; he was like he was in a city. The train was going down the track, and Humvees were right alongside. Um, and then I, I just went to a place and just started cleaning the house. I mean, clean it. I've never in my life turned over furniture and stuck the vacuum cleaner in the cracks underneath uh, 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 furniture like 
you know, <laughs> I'm sure somebody has, but not me. But I was doing it in that dream. And I just encourage you, um, if you are a Christian, definitely, by the word of God. If you're a non-Christian, I'm going to tell you something, brother. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He gave himself for you. And without you having acknowledged Jesus Christ as the Son of God and accepted him as, as your Lord and Savior in your life, you are going straight to hell. No doubt about it. You will spend the rest of your eternity in hell. Um, there's a lot of house cleaning that needs to take place. If it were not so, these prophecies, such as I just read, would not exist. There's problems here in the United States. I mean, we've killed so many children. Uh, 63 million, something like that. That's some, some kind of figure I heard like last. And we, we go about our business like nothing's wrong. you know. So Anyway, that's what I saw. That's what I wanted to leave the message about. Um, God bless you all. Thanks.